from PRX. Friends behind the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, fans of boba tea everywhere, it's time for sleep with me. The pod, you may say, what in the boba? Do you even know those, like, uh, do, do, do you know one thing that really gets on Boba Fett's nerves? I'd say when I mention Boba Fett and Boba Balls in the same sentence. What about if, what about, uh, does Bo, Bo Bridges makes Boba Balls whip for Boba Fett? Uh, there's got to be a verb or uh, something in there. What's a B? What's a verb? Anyway, what, what am I talking about? It's time for sleep with me. The podcast that puts you to sleep. Uh, I just thought of it, though, it's a bit, maybe balances or balance. I'll get back to it, hopefully, in the intro. Uh, so I'll be back uh, in, in a second. Sam for sleep with me. again. Once again, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Hey, before we get move forward here, you know, sleep with me is here, I, I guess, is, a, is a, like a, I, I talked to recently about how I learned in 2020 from the listeners that this could be a place that's both soft and strong. And right now, a lot of us need a port in a storm. And I hope that can this can be that for all of you, you know, surrounded by something strong. You know, ports got rocks or hills or something uh, to protect you. And ideally, that makes the water stuff. I don't know. I didn't have an analogy to fit in there. But what I mean is that this show is here to help you and to help the people around you, that it works for. It doesn't work for everybody. And that also means that that when I say you're important, I mean it. There's links to organizations. If you're having a tough time right now, you can connect with uh, for help right in your podcast app in our show notes. And there's also links to organizations that you can show with your actions that Black Lives Matter, that you can support the black members of our community by being a part of change. So use those links and then, you know, like in a few minutes we'll get to the pilot you know the intro and the, the the stuff like that is so you can be maybe you know maybe i don't know maybe we could all be ports and storms uh in our own way and sometimes we're all storming i mean believe me i was storming you know i've been storming before uh multiple times a day but i don't know soft strong and a port in somebody's storm uh thanks for letting me do that w- when i can uh, and here's a couple of ways uh, the sponsors uh, that i'm able to bring this show to you for free twice a week uh, hey, everybody, it's Scoots here. I just wanted to tell you about our Patreon. That's the way you could be a member of Sleep With Me. You could support the hard work that goes into uh, the making Sleep With Me, being there on a regular basis for you. But let me just give you a couple reasons, uh, like you could run through. I guess it would be like a decision chart. Here's what you say, well, do I want to be a patron or not? That's decision one. And I guess if you were yes or not sure, or maybe, see, how many hours do you listen to Sleep With Me a month? Do you listen more than six hours a month, more than six? Six episodes a month. Okay, and then you say, okay, well, yeah, I guess so. Do you want a little bit extra, like ad-free episodes at $5 a month or all intro episodes, bonus shows? At 20 bucks, you get a birthday message, a video message sent to you once a year. So do you want some extras? Do you want to save money? You could be an an- become an annual patron. But yeah, somebody once said that, that the extra Patreon's like the guac or the queso when you go to that uh, big burrito chain. Uh, are you a rebel with a cause like are you just wild enough to say you know what i'm gonna pay for a free podcast i could get it for free i could just take it and and, and listen and and but I, I you know i'm i'm wild man i'm so wild i'm gonna pay for a free podcast because i get so much out of it that's really in the end why people become patrons I, we my daughter and i just started supporting a couple of youtubers we watched together and it was because we, we really enjoy the content and i say man well i want to give back uh i don't know i just like it i like supporting people who's kind content I like consuming. And that is wild. Like that is rebellious. So if you're a rebel, if you're wild, if you're in a position to do so, most, most importantly, don't feel bad if you're not in a position to do to do so. The podcast is here free for you. So uh, don't worry about it if you can't become a patron. But if you want to, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. So that's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Uh, thanks, everybody. The new year is a new opportunity to make your mental health a priority. Talkspace matches you with one of thousands of licensed therapists in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. At the fraction of the cost of in-person therapy, you can text, video chat, or voice message your therapist from the comfort and convenience of home. Save $100 off your first month by going to Talkspace.com or downloading the app and using code SLEEP. That's code SLEEP 
at Talkspace.com. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The part, one part of the podcast in each of here is where I pop my peas and I say say it with uh, E, not with ease. Uh, this is pretty ease part of the podcast. It's where I thank the listeners who support the sponsors, let the sponsors know about it. That's why we're here free. And this really works. So those of you that do appreciate the, the, the Sleepy Supporter Zone and participate in it, thank you so much. Um, and I'm looking for some recruits. I want to thank Tanya, who supports Headspace. We got free trials for Headspace and Beachbody going right now. I want to hear from a torrent of people that signed up for those free trials because those are two things I use all of the time. Every day, I use a Headspace to meditate and I use Beachbody for yoga and workouts. So check out those free trials like Tanya. Let me know about it. Let the Beachbody and Headspace know about it. And I'll try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Uh, the second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. If you need extra help right now, there's links to organizations in the show notes, uh, to helplines, to text lines that you can connect with right now. It's also about supporting the members of our community and not just saying Black Lives Matter, but taking the steps to be a part of change. And there's going to be links to organizations you can link with to set you on on that path. The last part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is something I support, and I support the Emotional PPE Project to support everyone out there on the front lines, and not just your physical needs, but your emotional needs. And you can find out more at emotionalppe.org or use the link in our show notes. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Before I slow it down, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Posty poster song. Sounds like a near fall. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer, and Ashley. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the I do commissions at JonathanMann.net I'll write a song for you It's almost Christmas, y'all You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators You can support your scooter on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance We're raising money for the Water Wheel Foundation And Scooter might get a perm Thanks, Mr. Bard. Uh, I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you can find me. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it's a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'll do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside... Whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, you know, thoughts, things on your mind, uh, feelings, anything like emotionally coming up for you. So thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, changes in time or temperature or routine. And uh, we would have like, uh, I just got distracted. Sorry about that. Uh, my, mind, my mind just petered out, just kind of like this podcast peters out. So whatever scheme you could like to take your mind off that stuff, stuff it could be thought, it could be nothing on your mind. Last night it was ba- I had a baffling one where I said, "What is going on here?" Well, I play by all the sleep rules. Luckily, there's no there's no rules. That's just what people say. All the uh, what do they call it? all the uh, sleep hygiene things. Uh, and you say, so whatever is keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off of that, and I'd like to keep you company if I could. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Oh, so creaky are my dulcet tones. More creaky than dulcet. Uh, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I, I, I have a tendency to use filler words, m- muttering, uh, stammering, and then peter out. Uh, so, I mean, that's like a sound effect of an old-fashioned car on a cartoon. I've never been com- compared to that. 
but I'm sure people have thought about it. They say, well, I can't put my finger on it, but Scooter reminds me of something, not someone. They see one of those cars with, like, in a comedy where they're trying to, wi- you got to wind it up on the front of it, and then it makes a, a noise a bit like a train. It putters, uh, and uh, then it uh, stalls out, but it doesn't kind of stall, it, it, like, oh, yeah, wasn't there a car on one of those cartoons that, like, uh, it even made that sound and it had a face. So, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess I am a bit like that ma- imaginary cartoon car. But if you're new, a couple things to know. Uh, I'm here to keep you company as you fall asleep, which is this that's very different than most podcasts, even most sleep audio. And so you, f- you might find this podcast, it ju- it's just not for everybody, but I hope it works for you. The, other, the only thing is it does take a few tries to get used to. And that's what most regular listeners say, which is like hundreds of thousands of people have said, and, and I guess I'm proud of this, that they gave it a few tries. I'm proud of them. They said, yeah, it took two or three tries before I realized you just kind of barely listen to Scooter. It, it's a... Uh, it's kind of like a passive listening. It's different than passive listening or background noise, but it's just like out of focus listening. Uh, and then I then I became a regular listener because it helped take my mind off stuff and put me to sleep. So this is a podcast you don't really listen to. You may not like it. Totally normal. Uh, you may be skeptical or doubtful. Makes a lot of sense to me. So those things are true. The, um, what else is, oh, so the other thing is this doesn't really put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you drift off. The reason the podcast's over an hour, so you, you have reassurance. You say, oh, I got plenty of time to fall asleep. Scoots is going to be here to keep me company. And here's the thing. I'm going to be here to keep you company whether you're awake or asleep. I'm here for you. So if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here for over an hour to the very end. And you could queue up episode after episode after episode if you need it. But if you're asleep, I'm still here. I'm still here keeping you company. I'm on, I'm kind of like on call. So those are a couple other things. Another thing that can throw new listeners off is the structure of the show. Show starts off with a greeting. So, you know, hopefully you feel seen and welcomed. Then there's business, uh, listener support, and then the sponsors that support the podcast to be free. Uh, then there's the intro, which we're in right now. And the intro goes from around, I don't know, minute six or minute eight to about minute 20 or 22. And the intro is a, essentially a show within a show. It, it intro, But it also, it's a show within a show within a show. Because uh, what I mean by that is, okay, so the intro is in the show. So that's the first within the show. Uh, then the, the next uh, doll down, you know, those nesting dolls. So the intro also, it has a couple purposes. It introduces you, the new listener, to the show. Or for the regular listener, what up, regular listeners? Uh, or what about uh, semi-new listeners or coming back, listeners on a comeback? That's a setup, a setback's a setup for a comeback. So I'm glad to have you back here. So those, uh, okay, but either way, so the intro does two things. It introduces people to the show, but it also gives you some distance, some wind-down time. Because this podcast, even when it puts you to sleep, it keeps you company as you drift off to sleep. So you could kind of use the intro in different ways once you get used to the show. 3% of people now skip the intro and start the store, start the show at 20 minutes. Then another few thousand people uh, listen to story-only episodes on Patreon. But for the majority of listeners, they listen to the intro as they're either in bed getting comfortable or they're out of bed getting, you know, either getting ready for bed or doing some sort of wind down bedtime routine. Uh, and, and the podcast kind of serves as a supplement to ease you into bedtime uh, and give you like a kind of smooth landing pad uh, so that, you, you, yeah, you, you just don't, because I, I just haven't had any luck falling asleep instantly. So that's what I mean. 
So there's so that's the intro. Then there's business between the intro and the show. That's just how podcast business structure works. Uh, then there's a story. Tonight will be our episode, a recap of uh, an episodically modular series. I guess it's a serialized series, uh, Mandalorian and Mandalorian. Now, if you don't watch that show or you do watch the show, don't worry. These will be... You don't have to have watched the show. There may be spoilers because I am going to talk about the episode, but in a pretty indirect way. So then that'll be my talking about Mandalorian. Then there'll be thank yous and good nights. So that's the structure of the show. The reason I make the show is because you deserve a good night's sleep. That's what I truly believe. And that our world will be a better place if you get the rest you need and deserve. Uh, that, that's just, that'd be a good thing for everybody. I mean, it'd be nice. And the other reason is because I've been there. I know how it feels there in the deep, dark night, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. So th- that's a couple of things. The other things, it's uh, it just my, my, my mind tends to, you know, go off on tangents. Uh, that's another reason I just, I guess I'm make this show like the bo- like I do later in the episode talk about Boba Fett and Boba Balls but I didn't think about it as a tongue twister with Bo Bridges so you have Bo Bridges Bo Bridges uh, a, a sibling of Jeff Bridges not related to Je- Jeff Daniels though I get that mixed up all the time common mistake for me so that's okay. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's not okay with the Bridges brothers. Uh, uh, now, what was, it, what was the other one? Uh, I was thinking whenever I talk about the Bridges, then I got to talk about uh, somebody else. But now my brain just went blank. Oh, the Bacon brothers. And Bo, my imagine, the, the So I do write uh, Bacon brothers in Bo 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 Bridges uh, Bacon brothers fan fiction a figure named Bo Bacon, he's the forgotten Bacon brother. He says I'm one degree of separation from Kevin Bacon, but I'm not in the Bacon brothers band. So, but then I was thinking about okay, Bo Bacon and Bo Bridges balance Boba balls on Boba Fett. Uh, is that pot? That's kind. Of, that's not a, really a tongue twister. That's something I'd like to see. Well, or they could bake boba. I don't think you bake boba balls anyway, but they could bake boba balls. Bo Bridges bakes bo- boba balls. You're right. We do need some sort of modify. What is that called? Is that an adjective or an adverb? Adjectives end in l y, right? Beautiful, beautifully balanced boba balls. Beautifully balanced. Now I'm trying to find another B word, but b- put before blossom. What's a B word that starts banana blossom boba balls? And they say scoots them from the Institute of uh, Tongue Twisters, Tongue Twisters International. Oh, okay, go ahead. I got, I got you on the line here. Uh, you scoots, you normally, that's too many words to be in a tongue twister. We don't have a hard and fast rule, but that's way too many words. Oh really? Huh. That's good. Where where's your headquarters? Is it in my imagination? The International Institute of uh, would you say tongue twisters? Tongue twisters International. It is in your imagination. Okay, so let's run through this then. Bo Bridges bakes banana bob bob. There you go. I stood there. My tongue was twisted there. Scooter, your tongue's twisted a lot of the time though. Okay, you got me on a technicality. Bo Bridges bakes boba balls. But oh, whoops! Uh, banana bacon blossom bulb, but balanced banana bacon blossom boba balls. B- beautifully, beautifully balanced banana bacon boba balls. Before, but but could boba balls be betrothed to? to does betrothed just particularly mean? Uh, engaged, or could it mean like I've promised these? You say sorry, like say okay. So we say let's say Bo Bridges is sitting around his house baking boba balls, and uh, the, the, the Bo Bacon comes over and Je- Jeff Daniels, and they say Bo, what's that smell? Oh, I'm baking boba balls. Uh, wow, it smells like banana. 
Oh, yeah, beautifully balanced banana bacon boba balls is bl- banana blossom, actually. But uh, what's a banana blossom, Bo? Uh, <laughs> by the way, how many? This is getting ridiculous. This is why I love making this show. Uh, and then you say, Can I have some? No, they've been betrothed to Boba Fett. Okay, that, but, but could you just say Boba? No, because then people might think I'm giving boba balls to just boba. These particular boba balls are betrothed to Boba Fett. Uh, you, there's the invoice right here. You, so you sold them to Boba Fett? No, because Boba Fett does not work with money. Boba Fett works with uh, a more ancient system of... Uh, so they're betrothed to Boba Fett uh, in a long time away, galaxy far, far away, a long time ago. Bo, are you mixed up with Doc Brown again? I am. He showed up with Obi-Wan Kenobi, and uh, he said, Robes, where we're going, we don't need any robes. So we just need Boba Balls. And I said, you're in the right place. I'm a, I'm a, that's my hot, Bo Bridges hobby, making Boba Balls. Uh, I'm the first person to bake Boba Balls, as a matter of fact. Uh, oh, really? This is so interesting. How'd you get into baking boba balls, Bo? Uh, who, 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 oh, what, where are, oh, let me set it up. Welcome to the uh, Bacon Brothers podcast. I'm Bo Bacon. I'm here talking about things I encounter uh, during my day. Uh, and I'm here uh, recapping the time I showed up at Bo Bridges' house uh, and found him baking boba balls for Boba Fett. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, is your brother Brad Brad Bacon around? Why are you asking about Brad Bacon, Bo? Well, I just remember, you remember when he was called Bad Brad Bacon? I do, Bo. Yeah, I like, I just think that's cool. Like, is he the cool, like, I know uh, Kevin's, you know, the, the main Bacon brother. Oh, thanks a lot, Bo. I thought we were friends. Well, no, no, I mean, not, you know, you're the one at my house. Uh, you're the one that gets to t- taste my bait, you know, my test, you know, my, my test bakes. Uh, I just like saying bad Brad bacon. And I know Scooter does too. Okay, Bo. Uh, anyway, back to, I'm here with uh, Bo Bridges. He's making beautifully balanced uh, bacon, banana blossom, boba balls, betrothed to Boba Fett. Before we get off, I just thought it wondered if you could think of any other B words we could uh, gratuitously slip into here. Also, we've learned we're in violation of the tongue twister. The tongue twister international, they've got to be like, wait a second, no one's uh, spun any tongue. Is there tongue twisting tales? That should be, that could be my next podcast. Uh, I think it's called Sleep With Me, Scoots. Oh, yeah. I just, but I don't always use the same letters. I just, my tongue twists on its own. So funny thing, I'm always tongue twisted, but I can't fold my tongue into a taco. Like, like whatever, I don't know what percentage of the population can do that. Uh, Bo Bacon can. What about bad, bad Brad Bacon? What about, could we get a word, like, could we fit a bard in there? No. Butter, buttery. Bo, 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 bo balls, uh, bo, and, uh, okay, we, you're right, it petered out, just like I said at the beginning of the podcast, eventually it peters out. So thank you so much, Bad Brad Bacon, Bo Bacon, Bo Bridges, Boba Fett, Bo, ball, bo, 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 bo Balls, everybody everywhere. Uh, I appreciate your time. This podcast can, can get silly. I mean, uh, but I'm here to barely put a smile on your face. That was an example. It was ex- if if you were barely laughing, that was an accident. I was just really intrigued because I was picturing like a like not not an ostentatious Hollywood Hills house. You know, just halfway up a hill, the hill with good view, windows open, boba ball steams going out the window. Bo Bridges is in an apron. Uh, and then, uh, Bo Bacon shows up, Boba, you know, and then somewhere in a galaxy far, far away, Boba's, you know, waiting, saying, when am I, I gotta get those Boba balls, uh, Fennec, go out, has the delivery come? What time did Doc Brown and Obi-Wan say they were going to be here? 
Well, they had to stop at the uh, no robes shop. Uh, oh. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. Uh, this podcast obviously is very different, not for everybody, but I really hope it can barely make you laugh or at least take your mind off of stuff and keep you company while you drift off. I appreciate your time. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to be here for you twice a week for free. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about Brooklyn. And, and I don't know if you're like me. In the past, I, you know, I, I didn't even think about my sheets except when they got on my nerves or I looked at my bed and I said, Ugh, gross. Or what's my mom going to say when she sees my bed, even if it's made? But having amazing sheets, amazing bedding, a nice duvet that you look forward to getting into every night. You say, oh, boy, I cannot wait to slide into those sheets. And when you make your bed, you say, my my mom could come in here anytime she wants. That's the relationship I have with my bedding because of Brooklyn. And so do yourself a favor. Upgrade your bedding right now. I can't tell you when I, how much I look forward to changing my sheets and then saying, oh boy, tonight. Oh man. It is really like talk about a small thing that is like, go. Like you say, I don't need to go to a spa. I just need to change my sheets out. It's, it's amazing. And I'm laughing because it's true. So find out for yourself. Get some Brooklyn and backup. Get some amazing new sheets. It changes bedding out. Now, Brooklyn Inn was founded by Rich and Vicky, who said, you know, there's no place to find beautiful home essentials that don't cost tons of money. Why isn't there a way to get luxury bedding without all these markups? And they figured that out uh, by working directly with manufacturers to make luxury bedding available direct to you without the luxury level markups. I mean, Brooklyn Inn has a variety of colors, patterns, materials to fit your needs and tastes. They have over 50,000 five-star reviews in counting and they're so confident you'll love their products they even offer a 365 day money back guarantee but brooklyn is way more than just sheets they have comforters pillows towels even loungewear so much more the towels are absolutely amazing so it's 2021 and it's time to do something nice for yourself to start the new year and to help you do that brooklyn and has a special offer go to brooklyn.com and use the promo code sleep with me to get 25 dollars off when you spend a hundred dollars or more plus free shipping. What a deal. And that's a new promo code and a new deal. That's brooklinen.com. B R O O K L I N E N.com. And use that promo code SLEEP with me to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more plus free shipping. That's brooklinen.com. And use the promo code SLEEP with me at checkout. Uh, thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about Beachbody. But here's all you really need to know. I've been using Beachbody to work out at home, to do yoga at home for years. And this is a free, no obligation trial. So I'll just tell you, if you want to get to the short thing, just text SLEEP to 303030 for a free, no obligation membership. That's how I got on Beachbody, and I've been there since. And I, like back when gyms were open, I used to compare the value. I'd say, okay, pay for a year beach body that costs about as much as two months at the gym but i use beach body every single day and actually multiple times a day and for me it was part of that new year's thing i wanted to get in better shape but i needed something that i could do on a consistent basis that i enjoyed and look forward to and, I, and then i heard about beach body on another podcast rob has a podcast i said wait a second this sounds so easy it has a selection beach body offers over 1500 different at-home workouts plus nutrition plans so no matter what your goals are there's a program that'll help you build and keep healthy habits so you got a lot to choose from it works they have a history of success they're the same company behind p90x insanity 21 day fix and now you can check out beachbody's newest programs like muscle burns fat and 80 day obsession and it's fun it is something i look forward to and i think a part of that is having these really great trainers uh Tony Horton, Joel Freeman, and Autumn Calabrese. And the reason they're celebrity super trainers is because they make working out fun. They have amazing programs, ideal for all fitness levels. There's bodybuilding programs, there's weight training, there's cardio, there's yoga, there's HIT, there's dance workouts. They even have workout calendars and progress trackers. And they have years and years of experience. They've trained millions of people on losing weight, burning calories, and getting in great shape. And, and that's what I've been 
I'm proudest about is that I'm able to use it on a consistent basis. That feels the best to me. I know I'm taking good care of my body. I know I'm practicing self-care because I've found a way to exercise on a regular basis that I enjoy. And you can work out on your schedule. There's workouts as short as 10 minutes that don't require any extra equipment. So you could be done working out before you even debate whether you were going to go to the gym or not. You can access it anytime, anywhere. You can view workouts on your smart TV, your tablet, your smartphone, your Roku, Apple TV, Chromecast, uh, Fire Stick. It's everywhere. I started the year off. I did the three-week yoga retreat. Now I'm doing Lift 4. If you want to get in on it with me or you want to do the three-week yoga retreat, I'll start that again in the morning. So let me know. So let's get in shape together. 2020 is behind us. It's a new year, which means it's time to get in shape. And again, I said this is free, right? You heard that part. To get a special free, no obligation membership text to sleep to 303030. You'll get full access to the entire platform, all the workouts, nutrition information, and support absolutely free. So just text sleep to 303030 and let me know about it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Season two, episode six. Could we, are we here so soon? I can't believe it, uh, but we are. And what a what an exciting uh, episode! Of course, for personal reasons, as you'll see later on, as well as uh, just a great episode. I think this is one of those episodes that people are going to look back on and say, "Wow!" Like because kind of in the towards the middle of the season, but a little bit closer to the back end. A lot in this episode, clocking in at a super tight 33 and a half minutes. And that's with 33.50 with uh, all the credits on, in the beginning and the end, you know, the beginning tags too. But really, I mean, holy moly. I got to make sure. Let me turn on everything. Subtitles on. Muted. It's muted. And we get the recap snow. Oh, I thought it was snow, but no, it's the desert and it's uh, Fennec. Uh, sleeping uh, after parting ways with the Mandalorian being discovered. Then we see Ashoka Tano and Mando have their little dually poo. We see the power of the Beskar. Uh, we see Oso. We see Oso and Ashoka and the moon. Why well, look at that moon way up high, watching everything go by, including interactions between a Jedi and a Yodish being. Uh, we also know, his, we, like we learned his name is Grogu, or their name, excuse me, is Grogu. Uh, and we learned the mission for this episode, bring him to some rock uh, uh, where he could see a seeing stone where he could sit there and uh, ruins a Typhon, or, or on Typhon, ruins of a temple, a seeing stone at the top of a mountain. Then we get our glimpse of the Dark Troopers and Moff Gideon and Moff's, Moff Gideon's ship flying by, tracking beacons on the Razor Crest, uh, according to the assets. And we get a really good uh, Moff Gideon smile, uh, which is, all, you know, it's always good, not, not always good to see Moff Gideon smile, but uh, Gian, Giancarlo Esposito, it's nice to see him smile. Uh, because he can put so much into just his facial. I mean, so he doesn't have to speak sometimes. Uh, then we have the Star Wars opening. Lucasfilm first, of course. I'm sorry. Then Star Wars. And then the Razor, Razor Crest. Not the Razor Crest. Uh, and we see Green Planet. Uh, we also in the ball. Get some early comedy that I'm going to have to roll through here. That is, again, just so the writing uh, and so true to character. Uh, just uh, And it just shows also a little bit of a character growth. Uh, that the Mando's kind of having fun. So Oso's playing with the ball. Mando says, Grogu, yo, Grogu. Uh, and Grogu looks at him uh, and says, correct. And he laughs. Uh, and then he's so happy about it. Uh, the next time Grogu looks away, he says Grogu, and uh, he can't—he can't believe it. Uh, 
And he says, give me the ball. The ship, believe it or not, the ship is not functional without the ball. It also kind of shows the relationship. Uh, and he doesn't have to give consequences or he actually gets it back. Uh, but he says, actually, I just wanted to see it do some force again. And he tries to get Grogu to go to Grogu to do it. Uh, or Oso. It's okay if Oso is his nickname, right? Or the child. Osu does, Osu, Oso is not able. Oh, Ogu. No, that doesn't work. Uh, but Osu has some some trouble. Then he gets it. Mando says, dang, fa- dang, Farrick. Uh, and uh, first, Oso's a little confused, but he, uh, like, he thinks his papa mad. But he said, no, 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 I'm not mad. I'm like, oh, this is how my, you know, this is how fathers are portrayed. Uh, and some fathers even buy into it and decide uh, they get buzz cuts and they, uh, you know, expect their children to be uh, trained for the, uh, but he goes, but no, I'm just celebrating you. Uh, I'm not going to be a football coach father. And he said, the nice lady said you had training, but uh, nice lady. I just, that's just gold. That's such a good, uh, and he says, you're very special. If your head wasn't green, I would kiss, and I didn't have a helmet on, I would kiss your head. And then he heads into this planet, you know, get some beeping going. Here we go. You know, it's hard for, I, I guess uh, this is like a, let me, let me pause it. and Let, uh, let me run through a couple pages of uh, my notes and then go through the dialogue because I don't want to miss anything. Dang, Farrick, not mad, you did good. Nice lady, I underlined that. Sights, you're very special, kid. Find that place, I underlined. You belong. Take care of you and try to grow, grow you into a Jedi. I can't teach you. Learn learn of that, more of that jet, Jedi stuff. Uh, Mando, oh, and also I put a note, like Mando's talking, it kind of seems like to both Oso and himself, you know. I think that, I don't know if there's like been a study of, because there's not been of like science fiction or theorizing what life would be like in the cockpit of a sh- spaceship. Uh, maybe like, and I'm not kidding, this is none of this is a joke. Uh, you'll have to re listen to On the Road, uh, the trucking podcast, because it's like when you spend a lot of time in the cabin or something with yourself or just one other sentient being. Uh, the, like uh, you start to do your internal dialogue. I, I mean, I projected, I, t- I mean, I'm sure if it, people were, I talked to Koa pretty much 12 hours a day, my dog, and I'm sure 90% of it is like v- v- thinly veiled subtext messages to myself. Uh, then we have the title, The Tragedy, which you say, oh boy, uh, Razor Crest Jets by. Love the sound effects in the air, green canyons. Uh, love the dialogue, magic rock, can't land on top, windows down, flying Mando, lands, music, uh, stairs, round stone, this is it. Uh, some echo music, big rocks. Does this uh, look Jedi to you? I guess you sit right here. Okay, here we go. Seeing stones. <laughs> this is like the best written dialogue. Uh, it's just been getting better and better. I mean, because I guess uh, more and more, it's not, it was just so much more growth. Uh, like a fine wine. Like uh, You say, Scoots, what's your favorite part? I mean, for you about man, man, the Mandalorian. I say, well, the man, the, like, because... Uh, I mean, this is true, though. Empathy with characters. They say, well, the Mandalorian is just a, like, uh, in only a few aspects, a bit like me. His internal life and not my internal life may be similar. Okay, let's just see. We got the chapter 14 here on the live play. Green planet. Uh, very Earth, Earth-like, even the clouds and everything. Goes in, mountainous region. Oso's holding the ball. Mando's, uh, you know, checking the scopes and stuff. 
And looking, looks like that's a magic rock. Uh, not the magic bus or the magic school bus, but the magic rock. It makes me want to sing magic rock. Uh, and they uh, do a sharp turn. I didn't even notice in any of my watches how they both lean into the turn, I guess, meaning the planet has gravity. Sorry, buddy, can't land on top. Too small. We'll travel down the last stretch with windows down. Straight cut to Mando flying with Grogu loving it like a kid on a roller coaster. If they allowed infant-sized beings on roller coasters, Grogu would love it. Got a Mando looking strapping. Goes into this uh, collection of uh, hinge, hinge, which we'll hear the term later. So I, don't, I guess I prematurely hinged. Uh, Almost reminds me a little bit of uh, Breaking Bad, uh, Elbe- shots from above Albuquerque. Um, see some, well, even in the foreground, we see some nice bushes and uh, some great shrubs. Uh, you see, who was in charge of the shrubs on that episode of Mandalorian? Because uh, they did a good job. And I'm, again, once again, I'm not being facetious. See, top five. Well, I said, I don't know if it could be in the top five, but uh, something I don't top, I don't make a list except for the one I just made. I say, I enjoyed the shrubs. Uh, puts Grogu on the seeing stone, waiting to see anything. Gro- Grogu see. Uh, Grogu call Oso, the child. Then Mandalorian touches his helmet, does some thermal imaging, looking for a control. Walks around the seeing stone. And uh, there's a ruin, runes on the seeing stone. Then a butterfly comes in. Is it just one? Uh, maybe multiple. Blue moth or butterfly. Grogu reaches out to it, but uh, can't reach it. I think uh, there's multiple ones. Ashoka said, you do the rest, buddy. And then uh, and he's sitting in lotus position. At least you can't see under his shirt. Then another ship comes in, a familiar one. And the reason it's familiar to me is because I've seen other kids. Ha- I never had that toy, but uh, I think my cousin John did. Pretty sure that's who had it. So I know I played with it. I'm pretty Yeah, now I'm like 99% sure it was my cousin John. And he had that because he came with, uh, it, was, it came out after, return, return, around the time Return of the Jedi was in the theaters. And it came with... Uh, a, uh, a package for transport, uh, Han Solo. So it was really cool and had a little place to keep him and everything. Uh, so let's run through my notes. You see anything? Mando looks, uh, for controls, butterfly. Oso reaches out. Come on, kid. You'll do the rest. Uh, oh, he even puts a note here. What? The toy for my childhood? Question mark. Uh, Oso touches a stone. Mando looks. Uh, that ship lands. Oso the, the, it gets in the zone. All of a sudden, the runes runes turn blue. Energy starts to flow. Or Grogu Oso goes into a zen-like mode. Cannot penetrate. Uh, something out. Snap out of it, kid. Oso is in the zone though. Watches. Uh, Grove, oh, someone, he looks down to the ship, someone exits, I'll buy you some time, can you please hurry up? Then we get to see Mando go down a hill, very like he's dancing, uh, he's so uh, spry. Some laser blasts he hides, uh, been tracking you, Mandalorian, cloaked figure, Jedi, after the child, no answer, cloak off. Uh, for around my armor. Nope, not yours, mine. Cobb with Tatooine, belong of me. Mando something? Sample me making his way. In the world today, <laughs> takes everything you got. He says, did you take a break from all your worries? It sure would help a lot, but in the glor- glor- glazy like his father before me. Sometimes I like reading this stuff and then going back because it's like bad poetry. 
uh, the Creed, Back and Forth, uh, Sharpshooter on the Ridge, uh, Beskar, The Henge. That's like a nickname of somebody, The Henge. Didn't we have a nickname last episode, too? The something? Hey, are you The Henge, man? Yeah, be, why do you call him The Henge? Because he's, he's always stoned, you know. 420, The Henge, for The Henge, it's 420, 24 hours a day. So he's made a stone because he's always stoned. Uh, doesn't quite make sense. Uh, surrounded by maybe you'd be the roommate of some like a like a lived in like a like a suite and they, they were the only person that didn't smoke. Surrounded by stones, but it's actually the arrangement of the stones. So maybe it's a, maybe it'd be the hinge. Who knows? I don't know, Miss Fennick. Uh, not the ki- not kid here. Chat. No need. Put down the jetpack. Uh, sometime. Sit down. Have a chat. Fennec Casper. Helmet at side. Fate steps in to record the wretched cyber t- t- term termite. Uh, salty of child for armor. Fair deal. Uh, so let's run through this. Uh, and see how inaccurate my writing was. Oso touches a stone. Some great, uh, not just a shrub behind Oso, but it uh, looks like a stack of wheat. The great jet trails as the ship comes in, lands. Uh, then Mando goes, hey kid, we got to move. That's when the power comes on. Oso goes, eyes closed, we got to go. There's like a magnetic repulsion or a Beskarian repulsor. Snap out of it. So Mando tries once to get in. Says we got to get out of here. And uh, it's covered in energy. A bit like a a bluish version of what Neo sees in the Matrix. Uh, Mando checks the heat signature. Sees someone leave that ship. Uh, Then now he's like, I'm going to buy you some time. So he goes down. Uh, we see a nice uh, shot of the stones. Uh, of course, the whole time I was waiting, I said, is that a Jedi? When's it, what Jedi is going to show up? Uh, so another good case of misdirection by storytellers and subverting expectation in a good way. So Mando sees some laser blasts, uh, hides out behind a rock. Uh, but he says, you know, I'm the Mandalorian. So but we see someone, I've been tracking you, man in a cloak. Uh, and he's got some equipment on his back. Uh, he looks real tough. Especially since he, he doesn't have armor. He's not hiding out. Uh, Mandalorian says, you a Jedi? He just stands there. He's looking for the child. He just stands there and stares. Uh, takes his cloak off. We see he's like a, a famous like a clone original or whatever. Son of a clone. Son of a clone, he says, I want my armor, the, the armor you got on your ship, not your armor. From the ones you got from Cobb Vanth, Cobb Vanth on Tatooine. Belongs to me. You Mandalorian? He goes, no, I'm a simple man, making his way through the galaxy, just like my father. Just take the creed. He goes, I give my allegiance to no one. Because the best guy belongs to Mandalorians, taken during the purge. Uh, and he says, that armor's my father's, it's mine. And Mando says, you know, I don't like your attitude. And he goes, well, I got a sharp sharpshooter with me. And Mando goes, okay, well, I've got Beskar on, and I'm really tough. Uh, and he goes, well, she's not aiming at you, buddy. Your companion on the hinge. Uh, and that's when Fennec says, yeah, you got a keen ear, Mando? It's me. And uh, uh, the other character almost grins. Uh, Mando goes, okay, please, uh, just leave the kid alone. And that's when the other character, who turns out to be Boba Fett, we'll just get to it. He goes, no need for, for battling. We could just talk it out. And he's serious. He does not like, it's not a strategy. 
So Fennec comes down, man, Boba Fett lays down his arms, everybody does, uh, Mando takes off his jetpack, uh, Fennec takes off her helmet, and she's still glaring, uh, and he goes, what happened to you? And she goes, she, he goes, uh, the, the, Boba says, uh, yeah, someone left her in the the desert, but sometimes fate steps in to rescue the wreck, wretched. Great, I mean, seriously, line maybe the line of the season, but sometimes fate steps in to rescue the wretched. And she says, Boba Fett was my fate. Uh, I think that's the first name. Now I'm in his service, the first time he's named. By the way, I want my armor back. Uh, uh, then they go back and forth, belong to my father, belongs to Mandalorians. Uh, uh, if you give me the armor, I can guarantee the safety of the child and your own. And Fennec says, there's like a bounty worth 10 suits of armor. And Boba says, that's a fair deal. Then a ship comes in. So let's go back to my notes. The transport... Uh, let's see, transport ship comes in, Mando runs up the hill, Oso still in the zone. Time to go, kid. More magnetic resistance repulses Mando. It makes him even go to sleep for a second. Uh, Boba and Fennec watch uh, the door go down on the, um, uh, what do you call that? The door goes down on the transport. Then there's like a lot of ordering by whoever the commander is of these stormtroopers. Even calls somebody, he uses the I word, I D I, you know, the idiot word. Boba waits with staff, uh, something people. Great, one of the great action sequences of the <laughs> Star Wars history. Uh, there's a couple this season. And this isn't a criticism of anything else, but it's just like a pace. A con- it happens at a, a small scale, a consumable pace, uh, uh, which just makes it uh, like uh, really enjoyable. And it's, uh, maybe there's something that happens at day t- at a daytime on a pl- planet with a sun like ours. I don't know if that it does doesn't seem important, but you know, so much of uh, like so much of the Star Wars films take place either on in the darkness of space or in darkness. It just I just realized that I said, why did I enjoy this uh, dance off so much? Uh, also, the stormtrooper armor does not stand a chance, and they have mortars, uh, cannons, music. Uh, Fennec runs. That was the one part of the episode that you said, well, yeah, gets low, pinned down, boulder time, awesome. Uh, Boba finishes the rest. Uh, uh, R, he looks on Razor Crest or something. Fennec's still dealing with about 10. Another ship comes in. Oh, dear. Mando wakes up. Oso's in the zone, sees the trips. He makes a third t- try, which is not a charm to get Oso. Uh, he says, okay, I'm going to protect you. Stay there. Goes downhill. Oso stops, uh, rolls over as soon as Mando leaves uh, for a nap. Uh, then Fennec spin down again. Mando shows up. Uh, I owe you. She says, we have a deal. Uh, she hides behind Mando. Oh, this was a, another cool little sequence. Uh, then they're pinned down. Uh, then Boba Fett shows up. Uh, he is, uh, this one I didn't, I, I didn't notice uh, until the second or third time. And I, said, I had to ask my daughter, I said, did he just launch knee missiles? It, I had five exclamation, one, two, three, four, five exclamation. I, I said, wait a second. And I had to re- I said, did that, did that just happen or was that my imagination? And she she knew, she said, yeah, it's knee missiles, dad. What do you, you haven't, what, don't you read Tiger Beat uh, or whatever Boba Beat magazine? Uh, and I said, no, I have no idea. I mean, it does make sense. Uh, because, you know, having little side, you know, of course, uh, 
And yeah, you gotta, as long as you know when to activate, as long as it has some sort of uh, protocol, it totally makes sense. Uh, and down, oh, and then the troopers retreat and take off. Uh, both ships, Bobo gets down his scope, uh, locks on, and does the old, he launches, he aimed at one, but he actually hit, hits the one below it, uh, or above it, uh, does the old ship on ship takeout, uh, somebody says nice shot, he says, uh, I was aiming for the other one. All right, let's go back to what we have in front of us. Mando's running up the hill. Beautiful sunlight. I have to say, depending on what time of year it is, it's probably like uh, somewhere between 2 and 5 p.m. Maybe yeah, maybe around 2 or 3 o'clock. Um, um, Mando tries to get Oso. He looks on. Uh, try so he's like going through just like there's some sort of magnetic repulsion almost gets there but uh is thrown back and i don't know if that's a, a stone or like Oso or whatever then fennec and boba running downhill they watch as the uh, troopers get come off their ship uh and they go right into action go 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 but they don't land behind any cover, so they eventually get to some. But, uh, yeah, there's commander, I guess they wear, like, an orange uh, shoulder pad, uh, which means they're the boss. Uh, and uh, I don't know if they have Bluetooth speakers on their back, uh, like a lumbar support or what it is. Uh, I would assume it's, like, ammo or something, but they always have that. Uh, Boba, he hides behind a rock, uh, and he does some hand-to-hand dancing with, uh, I don't know if that's something that I saw on, um, on Tatooine before. I think so, but he is, like, uh, uh so outclasses the, uh, the stormtroopers, uh, I mean, to see him versus Mando would be quite the thing, but he's got a little bit more... I think he's like probably a little bit more muscular. Uh, he's wow, yeah, and no nonsense. Then the second round of troopers go after Fennec, uh, and there's even a cool distance shot of them going uphill. That's when the mortar start. If you're yellow, I guess is a mortar launcher. And then they're setting up a heavy, you know, heavy cannon. So Fennec kind of takes, you know, she, she's, they're, they're throwing everything they can at her. And she knows she's got to do something before, because once they get that, they do start, she somehow outruns the cannon, which I guess is possible. She's pretty fast. I mean, she was known as like, like the, the most effective. I can't remember how Mando said, yeah, you don't want to mess with Fennec. Uh, last season in the gum chewer then she does this boulder thing now that's just cool i mean in a just like the kind of stuff this is why you like uh, families watch things together is in anything with rolling boulders in action and she's actually running behind the boulder using it as cover uh and, uh, you know, to advance, the commander meets, uh, with, uh, Boba Fett, uh, he actually stands him up and then flips him over. Then he looks at the Razor Crest. Oh, okay. So uh, he looks at the Razor Crest. Well, maybe I'll uh, go see what's on board there. He looks like he could be a grouch, like before 10 a.m., and we have Fennec, uh, she's outnumbered. I don't know if this is in Angeles National Forest. It does remind me a little bit of it, but like I said, it could be anywhere. Uh, then we see a second ship coming in. Hasn't landed yet, but is fast. She takes her helmet off, which is, hey, what are you doing taking your helmet off? Oh, she throws it, so that's why Mando wakes up. Uh, Oso's still in the zone. Mando says, okay, well, 
another whole transport just unloaded. That's it. Uh, tries to go third time. Come on, Mando. Third time is not a charm. It gets thrown back, but doesn't go quite as deep, so he's able to stand. And he says, I'm going to protect you. Stay here. I'll be back soon. Someone to watch over me. What Oso's singing in the back of Oso's mind. Uh, which I think was a movie and a Bond song. Who did Carly Simon sing that uh, in the Bond, for the Bond movie? Now I'm thinking of Baby, You're the Best. Uh, maybe that's what I like. Uh, sorry, Carly. Okay, so also rolls up with Fennec, uh, uses the tweeting bir- Tweety Birds or whatever they're called, uses his best scar. They team up. Uh, she says, this isn't looking good. He goes, yeah, I've seen worse. Uh, and he goes, why don't you take off and I'll just deal with these ge- these, uh, these troopers. Uh, she goes, no, we got a deal because they're surrounded or, or they're in crossfire. So they are in a bit of trouble, but then... From the sky comes uh, not a bird, not a plane, but a boba. Not a boba ball either, but a tough, uh, you know, a boba fett. uh, And he makes quick work, uh, uses some some other things, but uh, quick work. He uses his wrist stuff, his hand stuff, hand to hand, does some dancing. Serious dancing. He uses some sort of jet blaster. This is when he uses the knee stuff. He's got four. One, two. He uses only two of the knee things, and then everybody, the rest of them run. Back to the ship. Back to the ship. Don't Wouldn't you get, wouldn't that be it? Well, I guess it ends up being it, but. So they get back on the transport. Probably like a, a lost 70% of two transports worth of troopers. Uh, Get a slow mo uh, boba. He puts on a scope. Think about that. Before, when boba, boba Fett predated the boba, boba balls being popular in the U.S. by 25, 30 years, what would Boba Fett think of boba balls? Also, doesn't Disney does Disney serve boba tea? And uh, I mean, they could call it something else, but boba ball, boba ball, boba. Boba's boba ball of tea. You don't know, brain. You can't call it boba's ball, boba. You can't call it that uh, because it wouldn't make any sense. Uh, okay, so then there's a flash in the sky. Razor Crest is out. O C R A P. Then Fennec tells Boba, go to your ship. Uh, boba g- goes up. Uh, mind scope. Uh, Oh, Mandoscope, Sea Ship, uh, Kid, Direct Hit, uh, Dark Troopers uh, everywhere. Uh, they fly out. Uh, then the industrial music plays. Uh, very. This was very pretty, like a n- n- like a Nine Inch Nails, uh, circa nineteen ninety. One like pretty, pretty nine inch nails machine. May I think of that one? Uh, and they said, Are they robots? Are they droids? They have rocket feet, uh, they surround Oso in a very mechanical like uh, precision as far as their formations go. They march in, Oso wakes up, his eyes go wide. Looks to his dad, who arrives just as they take off. Uh, you can see Oso looking down, even on the scope. That's a tragedy right there. Uh, Fennec calls in Boba. Calls Boba. They got the baby. Don't let him get away. Infinite. Uh, have a lock. Uh, stop. Uh, do not hurt the baby. Loose. Follow. A big ship, they're back. Back who? The Empire. Uh, this, uh, this isn't a spice dream. Can't see with my own eyes. Uh, crater where the Razor Crest was. Smoke, uh, 
old mantle, old mantelpiece, uh, finds the kid's ball, crushes it almost in his hands, uh, perfect, some pocket, oh, then pockets it, finds Beskar staff, uh, Boba impressed. All this, all Beskar, take a look. Uh, and he said, oh, this was just kind of like uh, cleaning up. He says, look at my sh- my chain code. Boba goes to Django Boba. F- you're a foundling then. Uh, uh, something, the armor belongs to you. Our, our something is completed. Nod. Well, you uh, ship heads into question mark, question mark. Uh, Navier Marshall Bridge, Q, give legit feet up. Uh, don't worry, I'll get back to it, but uh, they just like what I wrote. Uh, locker scene, sharpshooter Mayfeld. Oh, ship heads into. Oh, Navarro, Marshall badge, gone legit feet up. Uh, Look someone up for me, sharpshooter, Mayfeld, Miggs, uh, 50 years, uh, piece of work, uh, spring him. You know how I feel, but these stripes, I mean, rules I have to follow. They have the kid. Hyperspace, uh, then a long shot. Moff Gideon looks in. Uh, bridge uh, marches off of uh, the halls. Oso plays with some stormtroopers. Stop him. Wait. Uh, Oso falls off. Uh, and then 2753, we'll get to it. Pretty much the highlight of my entire life. I don't even know if it was accidental. I mean, it was just uh, synchronicity, but it still made, it was like a, pretty much the highlight. I mean, it can't get any better than that. But it makes you oh so sleepy. Shows him. The Bard Star, the Dark Dark Saber. Looks like they wrote Bard Sitar. Remember Bard Sitar? Uh, that was a made-up name. It was a stage name for a sitar player, Bard Sitar. And, and he also played Kitar. Don't get him mixed up with Bart Star. From years past, uh, not ready to play. To put an eye out, uh, you'll have a nice long sleep a podcast to listen to. So they say, play the pod- sleep podcast, so also we'll go to sleep. Uh, hyperspace, message to Pershing, yes, exit. Oso oh, sleeps, so they pull out music. Uh, it was directed by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, then we have, uh, I guess this is the, I didn't number these, uh, Boba. So number one is, uh, Boba, the ship in the hinge. Uh, number two, dark troopers. Number three, Oso on the rock. Uh, number four, Boso, Bo- Boba's bridge cockpit. Number five, stormtroopers and transport. Number six, hinge from above. Uh, uh, number seven, Henge Lights, Dark Troopers. Number eight, I don't know, I lost, already lost count, Razor Crest Out. Nine, Oso Cries with the Dark Troopers or Flies with the Dark Troopers. Ten, Oso Plays with the Storm Troopers. And eleven, Boba Ship Navarro. So that was everything in my notes. So here we go. There's a razor crest goes bye bye. Really goes bye bye. I don't know if that was digital because it looked practical. Uh, then Fennec says, "Boba, get your ship." Uh, oh, so size. I mean, uh, Mando size. Uh, looks up, uh, does a scope, sees the uh, whatever the spaceship. We see Oso sleeping. Then we see, yeah, direct hit. Uh, have the dark troopers been engaged? This is uh, Moff Gideon. Momentarily, we see them fly out uh, in tight, tight formation, like almost like they're one ship uh, flying. 
five, four of them, four or five, one, two. Oh, it's tough to tell. I think there's five or four. And this is like uh, getting into that uh, Lord of the Rings territory. Even the, uh, I mean, the setting. So it looks like there's four of them. I don't know how many of the ring, ring, ring bears there were. But they land, they got oh so surrounded. Mando and Fennec are running really fast. Uh, they do a slow walk in from all four directions. Uh, Oso wakes up. Says, Mama, Papa? And he looks right at his dad when they pick him up and take off. Uh, and Mando can't believe it. He does a zoom in. It makes eye contact with Oso. That's the tragedy moment for sure. It was, you know, there was groans at my house. Uh, they got the baby. Don't let him get away. Boba says affirmative. He's got some red, cool red scopes. Got a lock. Uh, stop him, but don't hurt the child. And they say, well, that's not possible. So just uh, forget it. Okay, I'll follow him. So he follows. Uh, Watches. I mean, those troopers are fast too, like little rockets. And, um, and I think Boba's ship is well known for being unviewable, even though we're viewing it. So I think that probably fills in any questions about. Uh, they say they're back. Uh, he leans forward in his cockpit. He can't believe it. Uh, the outer rim's protected by the New Republic, not a spice stream. It's an Imperial cruiser heading down. So he heads down. They jump to hyperspace. Then Mando's looking through the wreckage of his ship. That's when he finds... I don't know what he finds. It's something from... Like, uh, something I remember it was doing... I can't remember, though. Looks like something you put on your mantelpiece, so... They're watching him go through the garbage. Or not garbage. I'm sorry, Mando. Wreckage. Couple flywheels. He finds the ball, though. Size, oh man. And holds it in the holds it in the palm of his hand. Puts it in his pocket or his holder. You can kind of see that Boba and Fennec really feeling for him. They know he loves this baby. And he picks up the staff. And uh, then there's you know, this guy's got honor. That's why the, I mean, so Mando starts walking towards them. This is when Boba shows him the chain code. All that survived, uh, Beskar, 100%, yo. Take a look at my chain code. So it's been in this armor for 25 years, and that's me. That's my dad. I'm Boba Fett. My dad was Django Fett. Uh, and Mando goes, okay, your father was a foundling. Yeah. Uh, fought in the Mando Civil Wars. Mandalorian says, yeah, your armor belongs to you. Appreciate its return. Our deal is complete. Uh, not quite. Uh, we promised to protect a child. So for the armor, we're not stopping until it's done. And uh, until the child's back in your safety, we're in your debt. Uh, Fennec nods. They take off. They go, and then we see. Oh, well, then we see him going in to Navarro, I guess, and landing. And you see, wow! I never thought I knew know some of these towns so well. But uh, then he's looking. Marshal of the New Republic got your badge. Throws it at her. R heard you're gone. Legit. Too legit to quit. She says. Or to bend the rules, except uh, in this case, locate someone, mm, whatever, uh, Mads uh, Mayfeld, Mads Mayfeld, or Migs Mayfeld, apprehended near the Dolestri system, Migs Mayfeld, Carthon Chopfields, 50 years, uh, real piece of work, what do you want? Uh, I need to help me get uh, Moff Gideon's cruiser. You know how I feel about the Empire. But these stripes, uh, I gotta follow the rules now. 
Mando thinks they have the kid. And then she just she tilts her head. That's it, you know. Then we see the cruise, the Imperial cruiser, whatever, New Order cruiser. In the, and they're not listening to New Order. But it's one of the few times I think I've seen from the bridge of a ship them flying in hyperspace. And then uh, Moff Gideon goes downstairs. I don't know it's necessarily downstairs. I just felt like it was. He's marching down the halls. And so we see Oso playing with the stormtroopers, uh, roughhousing for sure. And they say, should we stop him? And uh, he doesn't. He just says, Moff Gideon just has a curious look on his face. And he almost grins. Uh, and we also kind of see that maybe some of the hesitancy of um, uh, Shokutano is correct because Oso is really roughhousing. I mean, he is under extreme circumstances. I'm not, I'm not taking sides, but he's tired. And this is it, the moment that changed my life. 27, 27, 51. Got very good with that, uh, but it makes you oh so sleepy. Uh, and he says, but it makes you oh so sleepy. Then he shows oh so the dark saber, which does look cool, pretty cool. It's different than a lightsaber. It's pointy. It looks like more like uh, you you could also use it for some dicing and chopping. But Oso kind of reaches out. He says, oh, no. Can't use that. Uh, and he stands over Oso. You're not ready to play with such things. You put an eye out. Uh, Oso tries to use his power, but he goes, no, nah, you could use a sleep. Uh, then they play a sleep podcast uh, delivered. like uh, It's one of those ways you deliver it without a speaker, though. He calls Oso it, uh, and then he says, when we get out of hyperspace, get a message to Dr. Pershing. We're ready for business. And he marches off. He's glaring a little bit. He also seems like he's limping, uh, per, uh, uh, Moff Gideon. And then Oso sleeping, and we do a slow pull out. And that's the end of the episode. Uh, and here comes uh, Wendy Marstrap. Hey, everybody, Dewey the do back here. Oh, no, I'm the... Oh, boy. Hi. My name's Wendy Marstrap. I'm here with Dewey the do back I'm on the back of Dewey the do back Also, Scooter wanted me to tell people, do do backs have Dewey backs? And I'd say, well, they do sometimes. Uh, now, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's do or do... You know, okay, so there's do, depending on where Dewey is. Now, if I, okay, another question that came up in many of the thousands of emails I get, and it becomes very confusing for me to answer these emails. And I say, Scooter, who's sending these emails? And he says, it's all, it's all fiction, Dewey. Just keep it, just stay in character. Don't ask these questions. And I say, okay, but in my heart, I feel so many questions. Email, never heard of it. Uh. And I say, is it like sending a gram? And Scooter said, exactly, same thing. It's just, it's just our fictional term. And I say, so ever since this cloaked figure came in, uh, riding this vehicle that uh, he said was a fan fiction fantasy, see, and then he said, no, I'm sorry, this is a fun time performance machine for Fester's uh, fun time fun show. That I, That's what I really work for. Oh, I'm not supposed to talk about that. Sorry, Scooter. Okay, so what was I talking? Oh, do Dewey. Okay, so do, do, have I drank do, do off of Dewey's back? Yes, because uh, as part of my do back training, I said, well, if sometime I'm really thirsty, I could drink do off of Dewey's back if it's the morning. If there's do back, if there's do on Dewey's back and it's not the morning, don't drink it. I learned that too. That is do back sweat, which you could say is do on the back of a do back, it, but it's not do. It's ew, gross. It's do back sweat. Also, if you're riding on a do back, apparently you you can sweat on a do back, or your sweat could, if you're just riding like in a blanket, eventually you you and the do back could sweat. So wash your blankets if you're like because then you have double the do, not the do. So we were talking about some stuff. One thing I noticed, Scooter, it's Grief Karga. He doesn't know 
That's G R E E F Karga K A R G A. Now, grief's been in the world. Uh, it was according to this level, like uh, it was an idea that John Favreau had, portrayed by Carl Weathers, uh, who they knew in another through Directors Guild of um, Scooter. What's the America again? Weathers directed episode The Siege, which is this is what we're talking about here tonight. Uh, one of the things. And uh, he originally operated on a bar on planet Navarro, running the uh, the guild. And uh, then in the second season, uh, he's a magistrate of Navarro. Navarro, though, spelled N-E-V-A-R-R-O. And Mithril, that's the other one Scooter had trouble, Mithril, M-Y-T-H, Myth, Roll, like when you roll with a myth without two L's. And Mithril is, uh, was in Chapter 1, the first episode of The Mandalorian. Got to, He's blue-skinned and amphibious, uh, fins on his face, and he, uh, w- like, uh, works, he's a bookkeeper, uh, for uh, Grief Cargus, Grief Carga. It's not Cargus. I get mixed up because even that, you know, spending so much time with Scooter. And I think that's all. Uh, uh, now, he's played by a big fan of Star Wars, though, Horatio Sands, which Scooter said did a great job. Uh, do we need anything else about. Uh, I don't know if we need any more to tell you about Grief Carga, Scooter. Keep practicing. Macaroon, Macaroon, M A C A R O N is a cookie. Uh, it's a meringue based confection with egg, icing sugar, granulated sugar, almond meal, and food coloring. It goes all the way back in your world to Catherine de' Medici in the Renaissance, probably. Uh, ganache, buttercream, or jam filling between two cookies akin to a sandwich cookie so yeah and it gets mixed up with a macaroon 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 maybe also had speeder bikes in this episode uh what do we need to know about speeder bikes jump speeders or hover bikes or swoop bikes or just swoops Uh, fast they use a repulsor lift engine and uh, let's see what else you need to know? There's a, there's a couple different ones. There's the Z, Z, 74Z, that's a Imperial Scout Tro- Trooper's bike. We've probably seen it in this episode. There's the Sith Speeder. Uh, we've seen uh, Darth Maul riding that one. There's a Bark Speeder. Bark is, it barks, it's worse than its bite, though. And those are, uh, cl- cl- during the, cl- the, uh, I don't know, Revenge of the Sith, uh, Clone Troopers. That was by Aerotech Repulsor Company. Oh, cause it was named after the specialist clone troopers, b- b- biker advanced recon commandos, blaster cannons, 15 feet long, can go up to 320 miles an hour. Uh, the Sith speeder, 400 miles an hour. And uh, the uh, Z- 74Z, um, 310 miles an hour. So that's a little bit about speeder bikes. How about that? Uh, oh, Alderaan. Alderaan comes up a few times, so let's cover Alderaan. Uh, according to this, it's a fictional planet, but it's just a planet mi- planet involved in myth. Uh, terrestrial humanoid t- habitats. Uh, Famously, Princess Leia Organa has uh, lived there, as well as other characters we're well aware of. Uh, is Coruscant on there? Capital planet of the galaxy, prefiguring the planet Coruscant. No, Coruscant's a planet, uh, Scooter. Come on. Uh, it's been in a lot of episodes. Uh, it, uh, small green gem of a world, according to one of the novels, uh, grasslands, plains, mountain ranges, forests, no ocean, but has a semi frozen polar sea. Sounds beautiful. Lakes and rivers to, to visit rich biodiversity. Oh, you can't visit it though. 
Sometimes I forget when I'm doing this. Uh, I get so involved. It Dem- was a democratic society, constitu- hereditary constitutional mar- mar- monarchy. Elder in your place, I Senate. Promotion of peace through demilitarization. I don't understand how it can be both those things, but that's beyond me. So, that, you know, that's a little bit about Alderaan. What about Moff Gideon? Now, Moff Gideon is a primary antagonist, a uh, leader of a remnant of the fallen Galactic Empire. Giancarlo Esposito plays the Mandalorian, recruited uh, to do so. Very ambitious. Uh, but, you know, he's not all or nothing, neither good nor bad. He's trying to restore order to a lawless galaxy. And similar to, uh, he's got a similar outfit to Darth Vader. Backstory, a few details have been revealed. Uh, apparently he was played a role in the Great Purge, an oppressive combat uh, dealing with the Mandalorians. So that's why they don't, you know, he's strongly disliked by them. Uh, the term Moff is a title for a high-ranking imperial officer who served as a governor of a specific sector of space for the Empire. Uh, obviously, after the fall of the Empire, Gideon's life changed drastically, and he became he leads his own remnant of the Empire. As the char- term, ter- character Caradun states, uh, he thought he was already dealt with by the rebels who became the, you know, then they became the, 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 the you know what I mean, when the power changes hands. So I think that, that's a little bit about it. Uh, I just want to have a little bit of the behind the scenes, you know, of uh, Moff Gideon. That's one Scooter can say, and I say, okay, well, can you work on some of the other ones? Finally, let's talk, let's see what came up in this episode 12, The Siege. I thought that's what we were covering, but uh, uh, the, the, I was thinking the Jedi. Yeah, I think we covered The Siege, uh, so let's go on to the Jedi. That's what Scooter meant for me to do. So we have Ashoka Tano, A H. Ah, uh, Soka, not Ah uh, Shoka, Ah uh, Shoka, Scooter is Ah uh, Soka, Atano. Uh, and this one we'll, we'll probably cover because Scooter had a lot of questions about this that he forgot to note. But Rosario Dawson plays the character Jedi Padawan of Anakin Skywalker protagonist of the animated film The Clone Wars uh, and the subsequent television series and was in Star Wars Rebels. He has a voiceover cameo in Rise of Star Wars. Ashley Eckstein plays uh, voices Satano and Ashoka Ah Ahsoka. Uh, it took a while to, for the character to become well-rounded and... Voice acting appearance, uh, design appearance has evolved over the years. Uh, let's see. Uh, but Scooter said, uh, like a pseudo samurai look. Uh, I just don't know if she's wearing a head or that's part of like, uh, where's all that kind of information? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of on my own with this one. You know, working with Scooter's great sometimes, but. So it says, uh, like, I said, what uh, nickname? Oh, Tor, Tag, Tag, Ruta, Tag Ruta, are a species from the planet Shili, S H I L I, humanoid race, uh, distinguished by their three and rarely four Leku, L E K K U, uh, also sometimes known as head tails, which are striped to help them blend in with their natural surroundings. So it is part of her natural head scooter. And uh, they also are involved in um, M-A-T-I-N-G-ing or, K, you know, not, I guess you probably would kiss a kiss one. Colors of Tag Rutas uh, range from red, most common, orange, yellow, blue, even white. They also have a form, pass, uh, possess a form of passive a- acoustic echolocation by means of their hollow mantras. 
So that's information that we now know. It's like, yeah, that's a part of her head, Scooter, not a headpiece. Uh, what else do we need to know from that episode before we say goodnight to everybody? Well, Scooter said Michael Bean was the actor that played uh, Lang. And he was in a couple classic films, uh, really good movies uh, from uh, more than just a couple, Scooter. But, uh, yeah, some very good classic movies. Uh, Kyle Reese, Dwayne Hicks. So beloved, beloved performer. And so that was like, he said, well, that's an interesting role from here as not a good per. I mean, I guess more of a me. Well, he tried to double cross though. So yeah, we won't get into Grand Admiral Thrawn, Thrawn, Thrawn because, uh, that one will have to wait for, you know, uh, later development because that's probably important in the next season. And we don't want to have to, go, you know, uh, you know, mess that up at all. So that's it. That's it. Uh, I'm here. I'm uh, your friend, Wendy Marstrap, and uh, my Dewey do back bringing you facts uh, from this fictional, you know, from your fic to you, from my real world to your fictional world uh, performing. I feel just like uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, hollow stars, Frulnan Lafonda. Good night. All right, I want to thank everybody that reviewed I have, I have a show on Apple Podcasts recently. D- Dicey Ann, uh, five stars, left five star review. Uh, the host is inclusive, progressive, uh, weird tangents might not be for everyone, but the podcast helps me sleep and also helps me sleep better. No one the host cares. Uh, PRSKT says, such a lifesaver. Always had issues falling asleep, mix of insomnia and stress, anxiety. Uh, currently working a week on, week off, overnight shift on my off weeks. I'm at work a normal nine to five. Oof, glad I could be here for you. Suffice to say, falling asleep is uh, not easy. Brain won't shut off. Podcast is a blessing. I couldn't tell you what a single episode's about because I'm typically asleep in about 15 minutes. And uh, it really means a lot to you. All I have to say is thank you. Uh, Jess, uh, Jess the man from Canada says, I sleep. Four stars, yay. Uh, W.D. Catster. W.D. Caster says, uh, amazing, fall asleep in 10 minutes, Wouldn't, couldn't sleep for multiple days in a row until I found this. Thank you. Beck Bahamas is essential. Recently started this podcast, and I love it. Almost can't sleep without listening. I have trouble sleeping, helps me big time, keeps me entertained, but I can still fall asleep. Uh, someone from Hong Kong uh, said, nice, uh, with a lot of checks, uh, a lot of stars, 100 pounds, uh, and random letters. Don't you even say that, but I'll try now because you dared me. Uh, thanks. Ida from Norway says, try this. Uh, always been struggling to fall asleep. I found this podcast. I'm asleep within eight minutes. Uh, works well. Love it. Uh, thank you. God, King of King says best, uh, the best. Thank you. KL Cloud, you're really good. I fall asleep before it's over. Good. And uh, Frozen Ice Cube, 26. 26, there's 20, wow, there's 26 Frozen Ice Cubes reviewing podcasts. That is cool. Uh, first episode I listened to was about an ice cream bar, and I remember laying there like, what is he talking about? But since then, I've been hooked. Uh, Definitely worth a try. Trust me, he'll become part of your daily routine. LOL. Also, Scoots, uh, uh, something. Oh, talk in detail why I started this. Yeah, if you check out any of the um, zero zero episodes, so what are we at? Are we in 900 or 800 episodes? 900, so episode 900, 800, 700, 600, 500. We cover that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody, for reviewing the show. We could be here as a free podcast because people that uh, support the patrons and support us via Patreon. You could also free help the show by using the free trial sponsors offer or spreading the word. You could even get credit for it now at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. And uh, that's it. I uh, just want to let you know about one more thing. But hey, do you want me to adjust that for you? You got it. Good night.
Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here tucking you in and letting you know uh, if you're listening and you're saying, you know, I want a more comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me, but I also want the Sleep With Me logo on it. You could check out our Sleep Phones merch store at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. It's all Sleep Phones, the whole lineup uh, with the Sleep With Me, you know, Sleep With Me logo on there. Pretty cool. You could get there at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and then use our promo code Sleep With Me. And you'll get an extra five dollars off. Uh, how do you want me to? You want me to tuck you in there? Move it. Move those blankets. Okay. How about that? Okay. You got it. Good night.